All right, guys. Uh, welcome to Cops and Cameras. My name is Anthony Bandiero. We have about an hour to get through a, a lot of material, so let's kind of dive in. These are the five topics that I want to talk to you about and uh, really, you know, kind of give you some best practice here. It all starts with some the law, right? So what I think are some important cases here is first this, right? Um, we know that the right to film matters of public concern, including police activity, is firmly established. I do not know why cops get so bent out of shape when a camera is pointed at their performance, right? What their public activities. I don't know why. I don't know why cops hate it so much. I think part of it is that they don't want to be caught making mistakes on camera. So, you know, um, it's getting less and less because cameras are part of the job. But even still, even despite the fact that the cop has a camera and is filming everything, I still see cops get bent out of shape that somebody's recording them. And I just don't understand. So people have a right to record their government, right? In the face of verbal challenges to police action, officers must respond with restraint. We are mindful that the preservation of liberty depends in part upon the maintenance of social order. But the First Amendment recognizes wisely, we think, that a certain amount of expressive disorder not only is inevitable in a society committed to individual freedom, but must itself be protected if that freedom would survive. Now, um, that's actually true too. Zach says that because they're also going to post the video out of context. That That's true. That's true. But I don't know. I, I still think, yeah, I, I think that's true. There probably is obviously some more to that too. But all right. So this next video is going to, um, this arrest is actually going to end up going to the U.S. Supreme Court. Let's look at it. Later, more calls for underage drinking. I shined a light on him, and he ran from me. I caught up to him, and he's a point zero three eight. He's eighteen. Hey guys, so what's happening? You got juveniles coming in here and snatching your beer. So you gotta keep the beer in here. Hey, back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! On the ground! 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 Now! On the ground! On the ground! Now! You're gonna get tased! You're gonna get tased! On the ground! Now you're going to jail! For what? Harassing my troops! I was not harassing! Yeah, you were! You could have walked away! I want your commanding officer here now! As the night comes to an end... You're done. You're going to jail. It's clear that Arctic Man 2014 was one weekend that won't be forgotten. Either by the folks out here or the troopers working to protect them. Let's try not to pick up any more cases yeah, no, and get the hell out of here. John Thane, KTVA 11 News. Now, now I was actually pretty, um, you know, excited when I found that video because I'm like, damn, that is the, you know, the Bartlett case. And so what happened briefly is that, you know, Bartlett sued and he said, hey, look, he said that, uh, you know, my arrest was not only for obstruction, allegedly, but really it was for my speech. Right. And the Ninth Circus had this like convoluted test where they were like, hey, look, if you can kind of like if you're alleging that an arrest was also based on First Amendment retaliation, then let the jury kind of figure out. That was like really, to me, like the crux of what they were saying. And it went to the U.S. Supreme Court and said, hey, hold up. That's really not going to work, right? I mean, a lot of people are engaged in, you know, criticism of their government and criticism of the police officers as they're getting arrested. So that's that's not the right standard. Instead, they said that probable cause is generally a you know a uh, a defense right to a first member retaliation claim unless the person the the plaintiff had has you know objective evidence right that the person was really primarily motivated to suppress their speech um enter fane lozman so what happened here briefly is that fane 
has a house that floats. And it's not a house boat. To me, that's something different. This is a house that actually has, it, it has flotation things underneath, right? It's a house that floats. And he moors it, you know, in Riviera Beach. And I guess they like, you know, kind of uh, condemn, you know, they can uh, condemn the law. Uh, I'm looking at Sean here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they not condemned it. They uh, eminent domained the, the beach and, and so forth and gave it to a private developer. And he just thinks that's unfair because now he's not going to have a place to hook up his house that floats. And this is a video is kind of central to the case at hand. Municipalities are immunized. They can arrest you even though it's some bogus uh, charge like, oh. Because Fane Lozman knows that firsthand. Peter Ringel is a rude, obnoxious guy. He won't okay, assign Mr. me one. Mr. Lozman, please. I, I, no, he's refrain a rude, from, obnoxious, from unprofessional. Public attacks, okay? I can say what I want to. No, yes, not I can. In this meeting, you he won't. is a rude, obnoxious, uh, Mr. unprofessional Officer, please employee Mr. Lozman who needs to be please. thrown out. Lozman has been arrested in Florida several times while speaking during the public comment session at Riviera Beach Council meetings even though state law guarantees his right to speak. And municipalities and, uh, you know, the board's municipalities, they're, they're basically violating that because when somebody starts speaking, if it's not positive, they drag them out of meetings. All right, so basically like the, the, the back story is the, the mayor there said, Hey, you know, take him out. Right. And so the police officer, uh, you know, takes him out for disrupting a meeting and he sues and he does a little discovery and he finds out essentially that the mayor and the city council are talking about Fane Lozman in closed meetings. And they essentially are talking about how to take care of the Fane Lozman problem and they do you know basically him always like his 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 outbursts and you know and, and, and it's not just the outburst but it was his speech they, they there was evidence that they were going after him because of what he was saying not how he was saying it and the supreme court said that Fane has produced evidence that they were trying to suppress his speech at a public meeting and he actually won his case so here are some examples of other you know, violating the First Amendment, right? Arresting a drunk person for yelling profanities and pointing a finger. Arresting a citizen who yelled profanities at an officer. Stopping a car after the occupant yelled F you to a trooper. Restopping a driver after she gave the cop a middle finger. Cops apparently don't like to be f uh, told to F off and, and give them the middle finger. And arresting a bystander who yelled, why don't you pick on someone your own size? These are all just very quick summaries, but these are all examples of where the cops kind of got jammed up a little bit because there was proof, according to the court, that there was animus towards the, the, the person for their speech. Now, I'm going to tell you a very big pro tip, okay? The best way to resolve these issues is to not focus on the content of their speech generally speaking who cares what they say unless it's really actionable instead focus on the conduct what are they doing that violates the law right they can say whatever they want it's just that they can't do whatever they want an arrested suspect wanted to pray before being transported to jail and the deputy refused right <laughs> I like you need Jesus. <laughs> exactly, Austin. So does a person have a right to basically engage in their prayer practices before they get arrested? What if their prayer practice was to get a steak and lobster dinner before they get arrested, right? What if that was their religion? Uh, the Supreme Court said that a person has no right to delay an arrest and engage in religious practices. So, you know, let them know that they can engage in their religious practices you know, after they get uh, booked in and so forth. Uh, absolutely. And so uh, an officer on here says, we were instructed to stop a car after one of the passengers yelled anti-Semitic statements at a pro-Israeli protest. Um, absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. Abs unless you think those are fighting words, which I would not. I, I should say, I say absolutely not. I, I don't know what the, I don't know what they're saying, but I would be very careful with that I know that generally speaking, um, were speech that is generalized to a group is going to be very hard to penalize. And I want you to think of Westboro Baptist Church, right? They say a lot of offensive things to a group of people. Um, but yeah, but fighting words are tough though, right? I mean, fighting words are, they can cause an immediate breach of the peace. And usually you have to have the reasonable person standard. So, you know, a reasonable person is not going to engage in a fist fight because somebody is, you know, um, a racist or something like that. I, I think that's going to be kind of tough. Okay. Um, three categories of speech that are not protected. Generally, um, incitement or fighting words. That's what Sam is talking about. I would be very careful with that. It better be like, if we don't stop this guy, there's going to be a brawl. And the person fighting, the person hearing these words is is justified in in fighting, right? It's going to be something that that people can understand, you know, why they would want to fight a person that says those things. But generally speaking, highly offensive speech is not fighting words. Um, it has to be like it's going to it's it's going to be an imminent breach of the peace. Obscenity. These are things which have no value, you know, per an interest, which is like basically the courts will say like it's just sex, you know, like naked people on billboards unless you're in Vegas. I guess are you can you can prohibit that speech, but not just cursing and in true threats. Obviously, a person can be you know um, cited for threatening people and true threats, right? So they mean it. They they have the ability, opportunity, stuff like that. Um, unlawful camper emailed the police and said that he will he was armed and will now fire on all sheriff and fish and game after this email. Well. He then gets arrested and he says, but that's my speech. I am allowed to say things like that. And the court said, no, that's not protected. You don't get to threaten people with deadly force just because they're trying to enforce the law. And, you know, it, it seemed like it was a true threat. All right. First Amendment auditors, right? The First Amendment protects the right to gather information about what the public officials do on public property and specifically a right to record matters of public interest. Right. So I like to think of these as the three P's public officer, public place, public act. Um, I don't. So Michael Bannock, I don't know those particular cases off the top of my head. Um, generally, so can people record in a library? I feel my my you know, a, a teaching on this in my training is that if they are lawfully there, then they can record it. If they're, if they're lawfully there, why can't they memorialize what they see and what they hear? But if they're not lawfully there, if they're, you know, in other words, we've had some uh, people that come into public buildings and they're not using the public building for its intended purpose, but they're just there to record. Do they have a carte blanche right to just record and not use the facility as intended? The answer is no, but be careful, right? Now, auditors want, um, we're, I'm going to get to the three Ps in a second. Um, public officer, public place, public act, but I'm going to get to that. Yeah, look, I, if, the, if the library has, an, has a rule against, has a rule against um, recording, I I don't I mean do they have a rule against writing down what you see? What what if what if that was the rule? What if the rule says do not record anything you see in writing? Would that be lawful? I guess I'm just I'm also thinking 20 years ahead like why is it so bad for a person to record if they're lawfully present? Why if they had a GoPro at the library and they were not messing with people and they were reading their books and they were doing their thing. Why Why couldn't they record? I, I, I personally don't see the legal problem with that, right? Um, just to be clear, the email is not protected by the First Amendment. Um, Joseph, that that email, that email was not protected by the First, uh, First Amendment because it was a true threat. 
Okay. And I, by the way, Michael, I think that my analogy with writing down what you see is actually pretty clever, if I do say so myself. All right. But I'm a simple brain, and that's how I think about things. All right. These first amendment auditors want um, three things they want money, they want badges, and they want fame. They would love to have all three. They would love to have all three. That slide's a little messed up, but it isn't, right? <laughs> so the uh, this is the three Ps, right? If the officer is engaged in a public act, uh, engage on a, and it's a public officer in a public place, then they get to record. Now, another way of looking at this is if, you know, some officers are like, hey, I want to... You know, I want to uh, push somebody back, you know, and, uh, you know, I want them to stop recording whatever it is. I, I say to that officer, would you do the, Would you act the same way if that was Fox News? If that was CNN, I, I know these jokes coming. Would you act the same way? Would you tell them to shut it down? And you're like, well, no. Then I say, well, why are you shutting them down? So they, if a person's engaged in recording, they are generally speaking in the held in the same legal situation authority as the as the as the Fox Five News. Now, somebody says, "What about hospital settings and so forth?" I do think you change the facts, you change the answer. I do think that you know, recording even at a public hospital, right? But recording people's medical emergencies and so forth can implicate other privacy laws. How about trespassing? Look, I'm not gonna get into trespassing today. There, you know, you have to you have to know what your laws are, but trespassing somebody from a library for engaging the First Amendment, if that is a first amendment activity, just to record what you see, um, is problematic. Okay. This is what you should do. Well, shouldn't do actually. This is uh News Now Colorado. Tuning in for my first First Amendment audit. Uh, right now, I'm right around the corner from, I believe it's a CSPD Falcon Division. Falcon Division. Good, how are you? I'm Brad Pratt, Spartan. Nice to meet you. You have a name? Uh, I do. You do? Yeah. Didn't want to tell me? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. I'd rather, yeah. Okay, so when people uh, take pictures of government buildings, in particular police department, uh -huh. it does cause some concerns to so some folks let us know. Of course. That's why I'm contacting you. Fair enough. Does that make sense? Yeah, so not a problem. Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, you got a badge number? Okay. What I asked you is there anything I can help you with? I'll be happy to give you all my information. When we're oh, okay. okay. Uh, I'm, making an, I'm making a threat assessment right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Fair enough, man. I understand. Uh, not at the moment. I don't really need help with anything, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm just getting shots for a story. Uh, I was just trying to get uh, squad cars driving up and down the street, really. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna like disclose any license information. The gate. <clears throat> yeah, I was just trying to get pictures of some squad cars, some marked units. Uh, I'm not like disclosing any like license information or anything like that. Uh, I just need some pictures of some marked units. I'm not buying it. Okay. Do you have an ID I can see? Uh, I'd rather not give it. I'm asking you for an ID or else we're going to detain you and get it. Okay. Um, well, you have to have reasonable suspicion that yeah, committed you a crime. Do, because you're outside a law enforcement facility okay. acting suspicious. That's all I need. Uh, is that a felony or misdemeanor? That's a misdemeanor. Being suspicious? Yes. Really? Yeah. It's called disorderly crime. Uh, I have an ID that I could see, please. Make this a lot easier on yourself, pal. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, I'd rather not give uh, are, my information. You, are, you, you are required to identify yourself. If okay. I committed a crime. And I'm telling disorderly you, conduct. Disorderly the Supreme conduct. Court has ruled that photography on a public sidewalk okay, is... we'll do it my way. Come with me. I don't have any weapons, sir. How do I know that? I'm telling you, I'm just... How do I know that? Okay. Just so you feel better. That's... I don't understand. You feel better. Okay. Where's your car? Uh, who said I drove? I got your car key right here. Okay. 
<laughs> you gotta meet me in the middle here, okay? And here's what I'm asking for. Just listen to me for a second, okay? You gotta meet me in the middle. When we're making this type of threat assessment, think about it from our perspective as well, okay? I understand. I understand the law. I understand your rights. All right. I protect them every day. Okay. With all due respect, that officer wasn't protecting that guy's rights that day. <laughs> right, Sean? <laughs> I mean, he, he might have the right intent, but he ain't protecting that guy's rights that day. And the thing is, you know, look, I've had some officers are like, you know, that guy could be a terrorist in disguise. And I'm like, really? I could be a terrorist in disguise. I could be, you know, plotting to blow something up, you know, and just working this angle with the with the with the YouTube and the webinars as my way to get into law enforcement or something. I don't know, but the point is, like, anything's possible, right? So, don't fall for it, okay? You guys are too smart for this. You you know you know it. I I I saw a video of a um, you know, <laughs> right? It's awesome. So. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Possible versus probable. Right. So anything is possible. And the, the question, the answer for you is that, um, you know, I've seen cops really fall for some, some, some dumb stuff here. Like they, they clearly know or should know they're getting baited and what they just do not let go. And I guess I'm going to tell you is that if, you know, if if a cop is so concerned about somebody filming their personal vehicle or their license plate, or they're so concerned about them filming the back lot of the police department, then either A, take an Uber, or B, go to city council and ask for a bunch of money to put up site screening. But C is not the option of telling this guy that he can't record on a public sidewalk, right? That's not the way it works. That's not how a free country works, right? Also, do me a favor. Don't play games with withholding your name and your badge numbers. Just, it comes off immature. Just, you know, just give, right? G give, give your badge number, right? And then move on, right? If you're, if you're going to detain this person for another reason. Why don't we step outside? I'm just talking to him. Same thing. This is public. I'm in public. There's nothing I'm doing wrong. This is a First Amendment, right? gathering content for a story and there's nothing you can do about it what's this your name is actually an office here it's right and it's a public office no, it's not. yeah it is paid for by tax dollars open to the public what's your name what's your name and badge number sir right here what is it right here can you read Take right you what if so what if i can't read it what if i'm not good at reading sir why are right you being, why are you being aggressive and mean officer there's no reason pacheco. for that is there okay and what's your badge number officer pacheco M there you go there you go there you go why was that so hard Mm -hmm. You're kind of a prick, huh? I can see. Yeah, I can see it. You don't need to be in this job either. So, look, the, the best way to handle First Amendment otters is to leave them alone. Didn't somebody actually say that, I think, in the in the chat? They haven't came up to us, so... As I know, you didn't talk for that girl. He was very cordial. And that is how you're supposed to act on a first day in your body. Look, look, there's something to be said about just leaving these these, these guys alone. Okay. You know, I really would like to see more of that. And I also don't like it when cops, you know, think that they're smarter than every, you know, than the first one auditor and they're going to teach them the law and they're going to make them look stupid. Even if you are a first one scholar and you know the law better than they do, you're never going to see that video on YouTube. So why even waste your time? But if you do slip up, lose your cool, make stupid comments, whatever, you're going to see that on YouTube, right? So personally, I'll just leave. 
Okay, so protesters at the core, right? Um, at the core of the First Amendment is the right to protest the government. Now, for those who are watching on demand, we have a lot of people who are making comments in the chat. So that's what you're seeing me do. I'm looking at the chat. And our friend here, Michael Bannock, says that don't also play music to for copyrighted music in order to like have that video censored on, on YouTube. Have you seen that video? It was a it was a cop out of California who was playing like Frozen. First of all, the fact that he had Frozen ready to go tells me a lot about that officer to begin with. I'm not personally, that's not in my top 10. Um, and the second thing was it came off very immature and actually laws were passed around the country so that the cops would not do the same thing. I've also seen an officer who tried to shine a bright flashlight into the camera lens in order to prevent it from, you know, seeing again, that, that is not right. You know, you should not be actively trying to prohibit people from recording unless you have some other reason like there is you know a, a serious issue going on like a, a a person who's naked in the street i can understand why you would want to block somebody to record that right uh, it's not you know we we don't want people's you know uh psych you know if a person's going through a psychotic episode that really shouldn't be broadcast on youtube i understand why cops would want to prevent that from being recorded and so forth um and the answer is Case law, I don't know what happened to that officer about with the frozen music, um, but I know it was very, uh, it was like millions of views, millions of views. Oh, the flashlight one. That's something I just saw recently. It just happened a few days ago. Okay. And so I have not seen a case on it, but it's just something that I saw on YouTube. Um, the other thing I want you to remember is that uh, the First Amendment protects profanity and offensive ideas during a lawful protest. So don't get, you know, don't get wrapped around the wheels thinking that you have a city ordinance that prohibits profanity, right, downtown or around people or, you know, words that cause other people to be disturbed. Don't think that that is going to work when a person is engaged in the First Amendment. And we know this for a long time. We actually, it came out from a case in 1971 where a person was arrested inside of a courthouse because he wore a jacket that said, fuck the draft. Now you're thinking, Hey, this is a, this is a, a courthouse, you know, you know, it's my rules, the judge's rules. If I say, take off your hat, you got to take off your hat. If I say, don't wear anything with profanity, you can't wear anything with profanity, but the U S Supreme court was not impressed because the person does not shed their First Amendment rights at the, the, the court steps, right? That's right. So, you know, the court held that while the particular four-letter word here is perhaps more distasteful than most others in its genre, it is nevertheless often true that one man's vulgarity is another's lyric. The Constitution leaves manners of taste and style to the individual. I mean, you can think of rap music. There is... There are, uh, you know, rap music out there, gangster rap and so forth that I find highly offensive. But I can tell you also that people during Elvis's time found his music highly offensive. You know, in the way he acted, highly offensive. So these things are left to society to try to figure out. The government should not really be telling us what is good and what's bad and so forth, right? All right. So police may regulate time, place, and manner of speech if there is a legitimate need. Now, there is a time when you are going to tell people, hey, you cannot protest here. You cannot use a bullhorn there. But it's be it's not because of what they're saying. It's because of some other issue, like they're protesting in front of a um, a, a correctional facility, and they're getting the inmates all riled up. Can you push people to another area if they are, you know, protesting in front of a correctional facility? The answer is yes. Can they protest in a park? The answer is yes, right? All right. So could you stop a person for yelling religious messages in a neighborhood at 3 a.m.? Well, yes and no. 
right? The answer is yes, you could probably stop them from yelling their messages, but you couldn't stop them from saying their messages. In other words, if you went to the person and said, hey, look, you have a choice. You can either speak a lower volume and say the exact same thing, or you can say the exact same thing with a bullhorn in that park over there where people can't, you know, they're not, not disturbing the peace. So you focus on the conduct, not the content, right? Don't worry about what they say. Worry about how they're saying it and how that violates the law. That's what you're going to focus on. Can they speak their messages without yelling? Right now, in the next video, the protester has a a, um, a sign that says "fuck City Hall," and he is in Mulberry, Georgia. And let's see how well this plays out for this man. Okay, I'm in Moultrie, Georgia, standing on the public sidewalk. Here's the public sidewalk. I'm holding a sign, critical of government expressing my free speech right to criticize the government. And this is the Moultrie, city of Moultrie, Georgia municipal building and their city hall. So I'm just gonna stand out here and uh, express my right to be critical of the government on the day before Independence Day. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm Pete Dillard. My name's Jeff. Jeff? Uh-huh. I'm curious, what's your issue? Uh, just expressing my right to free speech the day before Independence Day. To be well, critical of, uh, of City Hall. Uh, what? To be critical of City Hall. Expressing my free speech right to be critical of uh, government. Well, what, uh, anything in particular? No, not really. Well, isn't that kind of a vulgar way of doing it? It sure is. Absolutely. And who are, who are you with the city? I'm the city manager. Oh, city manager. Okay. Well, nice to meet you. But I mean, no particular issue with City Hall? Just expressing my right to free speech, that's all. The day before Independence Day. That's really vulgar. I, uh, How you doing, officer? Yeah, you're I agree, it is. I'm good. What's going on here? I'm um, expressing my right to free speech the day before Independence Day, to be critical of the government. Why is it? Uh, expressing my right. Free speech. Show me around. Okay. All right. My name is Jeff, by the way. Hey, my name is Paul Brittany Johnson with the Police Department. All right. What do I need to do? Huh? What do I need to do? You can't just stand out here with the sign like this. Why not? Huh? Why is that? Because you have to sign up. Um, I can't hear you over your radio. <laughs> you have to get like a, um, what is it, a petition? You have a, yeah. a outdoor permit from, yeah. from the permit. city clerk. Oh. Like that. Okay. So that's what I have to get an outdoor permit from the city clerk. I don't know if you want to pay just to stand outside with a sign. Can you go ahead and get it? Go in there and get one for me. Sure, you can do it. Just uh, go in, go upstairs, and city clerk take care of it. Okay, I, I'd rather not do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and stand out here with the sign. No, you. That's that's what we can't do. You cannot just stand out here with that sign. If you're gonna do it the right way, or we'll have to take. Oh, I'm not gonna go do it. To, um... This is my constitutionally protected right of free speech. Okay. And you've been put on notice about that. This is the most basic, fundamental, and well-established right that we as Americans have. It's none of your business where I live. It's none of your business where I live. Okay. Okay? Okay. Well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to call my lieutenant. I'm going to ask him what are my steps that I need to do in order to get this done. Mm -hmm. And if he tells me, then I can lock you up based off of this information. Then that's what we're going to do, okay? So you're threatening to have me locked up no, if you're I'm lieutenant? No, I'm not threatening anything. I'm just telling you what can happen due to you. What is your lieutenant's name? Hmm? What is your lieutenant's name? I don't have to tell you that. I'd just like to know so I could talk to him too. Or she. Well, she's going to call him and talk to him. And then if it goes further, you can talk to him then. Okay. I'll get him to come over here. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. I'll meet him and talk to him in person. I'm just disappointed somebody would be that vulgar. I, well, I'm disappointed you guys that you would come out here and harass a person for free speech. I haven't speech. harassed you. I just came out and talked to you. Is oh. that, that's harassment? It seems like it. Are you it. so fragile are that you, that's harassment? Are you so fragile that you don't like the word fuck? Uh, I'm a decent person. Are you offended by it? Absolutely. Okay, good. I'm glad that you are. Well, good. I, I hope it offends you good and well. Well, I'm, I'm 
I'm always offended that somebody's vulgar. Mm. Like I said, I, I'd rather not get in a back and forth with you about it. I'm just expressing my free speech I just rights. Stated my, I think it's vulgar. I think it's low class. I'm very disappointed somebody would do that. Okay, that's your opinion. That's absolutely, and I have the right. I'm to very opinion. disappointed that you won't stand up for my civil rights and tell these guys to back off as a city manager. I'm giving you the opportunity to do that right now. They're stand up. They're listen to me. You're the city manager. Listen to me. You're the city manager. Tell these guys to stand down and back off. I will tell, they will follow the law, the city ordinance, okay. and I don't interfere with that. What's going on? I just talked with my lieutenant, yes, and I told him that you were out here having a great debate with our city mayor. And he told me we're not going to have that kind of stuff going on in the city of Moultrie. So you put your sign down, turn around, and place your hands. Okay, I'll leave then. No, you're going to place your hands behind your back. You're being locked up for disorderly conduct. For disorderly conduct? Yes, place okay. your hands behind your back. I'm not resisting. I'm just a little big. I'm a little big. Can we put these in front? You need a toe okay. No, he's... He'll be alright. He's not gonna fight. No, sir. I'm not fighting. I will not resist. Lieutenant Cox said take us to the county jail. Yeah, Lieutenant Cox said that? Yes. Okay. Now, we do have a city ordinance about vulgar language, okay? Mm -hmm. There is... It's... It's well within your rights to have, you know, your protest and all that, but the language is an issue. That's where it's at. Yeah, I'm not answering any further questions. I, I, I will advise you guys to make sure you double check with this, because right now you're in violation of my civil rights. I'm, I'm really not, but that's okay. All right. So this is a blatant, blatant um, violation of the First Amendment. I mean, it doesn't probably get more blatant than this one. And, um, you know, so, you know, and the co the cops think that, hey, um, because he has vulgar language and because we have a city ordinance that says no vulgarity and, you know, whatever, and other people can be offended, it doesn't matter, right? You, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, uh, go after protesters because they're using vulgar language, right? Period. That does not work like that. We've known that since the Cohen case with um, F the draft. Now, actually, Payday, I don't know. I, I The last time I looked at this case, I, if I remember correctly, he got like 60,000, you know? And I'm, that's chump change. That's that's chump change. I would have personally not settled for that low, but I don't know. All right, maybe for Moultrie, it's, uh, it's a lot of money. But anyway. So let's answer some quick questions and let's kind of move through this. So quick, uh, Phil, Phil's talking about, hey, like what at what point does their, you know, their speech, their, you know, their yelling and everything. When does that become obstruction? Remember, don't worry about what they say. Just worry about what they do. At, you know, you can definitely enforce the law. If you got a guy in a courthouse and he's yelling stuff and you and, and the judge is like, hey, pipe down over there. I can't do my business. Right then that's that's obstruction or that's contempt or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, but what I like to do, Phil, I have a, a little pro tip. What I like to do is I like to take that same person, okay? And I like to replace their speech with something completely positive and something that nobody would be offended by. Like God loves police officers and um, please pray for our judges, and I hope that justice is done. But they're saying at the same volume, they are saying in the same space, would you take enforcement action on that person? Would you say to yourself, this person is also, you know, uh, uh, causing uh, a disturbance of the peace? If you're saying yes because of X, Y, Z, there you go. That's a winning case. But if you're like, well, no, I don't think anybody would be offended if they said that. And there it is. See, it's we don't care about people getting offended. We care about because people are disorderly conduct and stuff. Like people can't go about their business because the way this guy's acting and how he's yelling and his volume, he's blocking sidewalks and so forth. I hope that kind of makes sense. I hope it kind of makes sense. All right. Um yeah, obscene. That's why when I did you do you see I put like an asterisk on obscene at the beginning of this video? 
What about having a permit to protest? A person does not have to have a permit for just to, for like for a, for a single person protest, right? You you don't need to ask the government's permission to go in front of the city hall and speak your mind. Just so you know, generally speaking, you don't need permission for a spontaneous protest. However, if you want to block streets, if it's going to be a safety issue, it's going to you know sidewalks to be closed, then that's where the permits may come into play. All right. All right. All right. Westboro Baptist Church, you know, we know that, you know, they are highly offensive to most people, right? You know, God loves dead soldiers. This is very offensive. And they did it at a funeral with Snyder. Snyder got, you know, like $12 million, but he's not going to see a dime. Because the U.S. Supreme Court said, hey, look, slow down there. Speech cannot be restricted simply because it is upsetting or arouses contempt. If there is a bedrock principle underlying the First Amendment, it is that the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea simply because society finds the idea itself offensive or disagreeable. Right? All right. Let's look at contempt of cop. And then, uh, Andrew, I'll read your, uh, your question in a second here. First Amendment protects a significant amount of verbal criticism and challenge directed at police officers. So don't fall for this whole obstruction business, you know, or disturbing the peace. This lady walked into a 7-Eleven with some cops eating some donuts and drinking their coffee at like midnight in D.C. And <laughs> the cop then, a, a cop then followed her out and said, you know, you just um, can, can, uh, engaged in um, disturbing the peace back there, you know. You yelled at us, and now the cashier was offended. Let me see some ID. She's like, I'm not showing you any ID. She says, now you're getting arrested for obstruction because you're not showing me your ID. Um, they gave her $97,000 for that one. And quite frankly, I think that was way less offensive than what happened in that Mulberry video, but I guess the lawyer wasn't as good. So the point is, don't fall for it, you know, because I can, I, and I look, even if it was disturbing the peace and, you know, and so forth, it, you know, use good judgment here, use good discretion, right? All right, this, uh, this cop pulled this lady over for speeding. He gives her a non moving violation, trying to cut her a little slack. She does not appreciate any ticket. And as she's driving away, she flips the cop off. He then pulls her over again, rewrites that ticket for full boat. And are you thinking to yourself, we have a violation, right? He's like, no, I, I have discretion, you know, I have discretion. The court said fits of rudeness or lack of gratitude may violate the golden rule, but that doesn't make them illegal or for that matter, punishable or for that matter, grounds for a seizure. That costs that agency a pretty penny. While on a traffic stop, a car drove by and yelled F you to a trooper. He then stopped the person for a noise violation. <laughs> well, that's a very clever way of doing business, but not constitutional, right? And the person was troopers personally liable for money damages. Now, personally liable, they are indemnified. But the point is, I want to make it clear that that lawsuit is in that trooper's name. And they're the ones that found out or found that they violated the Constitution. A protester in the park was escorted out for wearing F the police shirt, F this, F that. It was all full of derogatory statements about the police. And they were ordered, um, they were, you know, several comments, profane comments were directed at the director of the park and the police. Um, the, the park pro director said, hey, he's disturbing my peace. He's disturbing my peace. So can we, are we good here? Can we kick this guy out of the park? Yes or no? What's in the chat? No. N or Y? Okay. Well, I sure wish you guys were on scene that day, because that's not what's going to happen here. They kicked his ass out. And the court found that it was a clear violation of the First Amendment. And it goes back to questions that you guys were asking me about, you know, in the, in the uh, you, know, you know, I guess in the library or whatever. But just remember, like, 
if you were if the guy has f f the police on his shirt in the library and that's why you're kicking him out would you kick that same guy out for wearing god bless police and if the answer is no then maybe we shouldn't do it maybe then our motivation is because of what he is saying not because of the way he is acting <laughs> obstructing i just want to look i'm not teaching you what your law is in your state but i am saying that laws for obstruction are way over abused can i get an amen from my audience over here you know i'm speaking the truth you know i'm speaking truth brother you know it man i have abused it obstruction i i mean i, I a guy commits murder and you're like, what are you going to charge the guy with? I don't know if it's first degree, second degree. I'm going to charge him with obstruction until we figure it all out. In other words, if you're going to go after a person for obstruction, it needs to be significant obstruction, like legit obstruction. And the one thing we definitely want to get away from is taking your focus away. Taking your focus away is not obstruction. That is an everyday life of a Leo. Every day that you're on traffic stops, every day you're in uh, businesses doing your job, every day you're at, you know, eating lunch in uniform, people are taking your focus away, but that's not obstruction, right? <laughs> Pray to LaFave. If you were, if you were, um, you know, if you were, uh, you know, on a traffic stop and you got the rolling 20s across the street doing gang signs and all this stuff. Look, I'm doing gang signs. If you have these guys are doing gang signs across the street, are they taking away your focus? Absolutely. Can you tell them to stop doing it or move on? Absolutely not. All right. Do you? So first of all, can we give the uh, the trooper some kudos for the way he handled the traffic stop? I, I think it's great. I think that the trooper did a fantastic job engaging that family, talking to the kids, lightening the mood, you know, get a better, you know, get some more, get a better ice cream next time, whatever, all that kind of stuff. I think it's great. He's not coming off, you know, uh, rude or anything like that. I think it's great discretion and so forth. But do you think that, do you think that he gives two shits about this, this guy being in the roadway? Do you think he cares if that's what he's want to go after him on? What, I don't know if that's even illegal, by the way, there's no sidewalk. But do you think um, he cares about roadway safety, that the guy may be drunk? Do you think he cares about any of that? Or do you think he's going after that guy because of his speech, him saying that, get the trooper, should go back on the highway? So roadway safety or speech, you know? Do you think he gives a shit about any of that? <laughs> he cares about one thing and one thing only. He cares about how people talk to him. Right, guys? That is unconstitutional. And I'm I'm I, I don't care what the you know if he gets qualified immunity or whatever, and you know, if he's gets sued on that. I'm just telling you, that is not constitutional. That trooper was a hundred percent engaged in a <laughs> basically a lesson of how you speak to your government. You guys with me on this? He is teaching him how do you talk to your government, and that is not what we're doing here in the, this country well it's not what we're supposed to be doing in america but that is also for another day right and unless i'm going to run for office my personal opinions are my own however i don't like what i see all right i don't want to take a pay cut zach i'm getting paid too much money with these webinars officer safety all right so let's let's ask some questions here, right? So first of all, is there evidence? <laughs> That's true, Rick. That's true. Actually, I'd be I, I get a, if I went for if I ran for politics, I would definitely get a pay increase. That's all. That's true. You know. All right. Um. Okay. So is there evidence that stop is motivated by prohibiting protective speech? You know that there is. You know that there is. If I brought this trooper in front of the, you know, a uh, a jury and asked this trooper a couple questions, let's see what he would say. Trooper, if a young girl 
walked by your traffic stop and in the same volume of voice, the same decibel level as this guy, walked by your traffic stop and yelled, Trooper, thank you for keeping us safe. Do you think that is obstruction? And he, the trooper is going to lose either way. If he says no, then what is the difference between her and my client? And you know the difference is the words. If he says, yes, it is obstruction, then it looks like an a-hole to 12 people. So, trooper, if somebody came up to you during your traffic stop and asked you for directions, would that be taking your focus away? Yes. Do you think with those facts that is obstruction and you could cite or arrest that person? And the answer is no, right? That's not what the law is trying to do here. So you can say potentially, but you can say potentially, but if you were going to go to court and you're going to say a person asked them for directions without anything else, they're lost and they come up to you asking for directions and you think a court is going to say that is obstruction, that is against the law. I'm sorry, I don't see a court in America upholding that. Now, if you told them, hey, hold on for a second, or hey, look, I can't deal with you right now, and they kept asking you, that might be something different. But just general facts, they're not doing anything else. They're just trying to get directions. I do not think that they're violating the law with those simple facts, right? How do they ask for directions is the key. Nicely? Okay. I think it's... Um, I think it's an issue. So, so a citizen loudly criticized a police officer during a battery investigation. As the officer spoke louder, the citizen spoke louder. Then the citizen was arrested for what? Good old fashioned obstruction. Obstruction. Okay. Let's uh, hold on. This is too much. Okay. So the, what I'm looking for is, and you can get these slides. What I'm looking for is a legit first amendment obstruction. I think you're looking for that physical intervention. Yes. Can a guy ask him for directions, cross that line? Yes. But simply trying to speak to an officer probably is not it. I don't think so in most scenarios. Substantial interference, you just can't do your job. Can the first man auditor who is yelling so loud or so close, not able to do your job, you can't even talk to the violator, is that obstruction? I think that the answer could be yes. Legit safety concern? Absolutely. You address your legit safety concern. Uh, somebody asked me, what about moving people back? If you can justify it, you could probably do it. But if you're just doing it because you don't like the way that they are acting or the, what they're saying, and that's the only reason you're doing it. In other words, the same person saying, I just want to say you, God bless, or saying, give a, a prayer for you. You wouldn't move that person back, then you probably shouldn't do it. Well, this, that's not quite true because what they're saying does contribute to safety issues. I'm just saying use good judgment here and you better justify either way. Some takeaways and we're going to, can I get out of here? Focus on conduct, not content. Make legit obstruction arrests. Taking your focus is not the legal standard in any state. It's much more complicated than that. If in doubt, I would just leave. That's what I would do. All right, look, you know, I think there's some wisdom in there. Um, there is a time not to be nice. There's a time to engage these people, but don't worry about what they're saying to you. It's not personal. It's, you know, they don't know you unless they are having dinner at your house, like, you know, or, you know, whatever. So let's do some, I appreciate the feedback. Let's do some, um, a quick Google review. Look, we're going to do a, um, we're going to do uh, some trivia, but do me a favor. Come on. Just, if you have not reviewed us, do us a favor real quick. And then we're going to do uh, three questions for trivia and we're going to get out of here. Hey, Wayne, why don't you put that on the, the Google review? That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? All right. All right. You think we're good, Rick? Do some trivia? All right. Rick, are you ready to uh, to find out who the winners are? Because, oh, you're going to get the link? Okay, even better. All right. So the rules of engagement here, you can win one of four prizes. Thank you, Frank. The rules of engagement here is that you must answer in one reply. You cannot break up your answer into multiple um, Rick just put the, the link to the chat, or I'm sorry, Rick put the link to the Google review in the chat. Um, you have to send the chat to everybody so they can see your answer. Wait for the timer before you send your answer. You can only win once. Rick, 
I'm going to have you tell me who the winner is, okay? It just, in, on my end, it just, okay. Okay, do not send your answer. Do not send your answer. You're wasting your time. Do not send it. You got to wait for the timer, which I'm going to show you. Before charging a person engaged in first activities with obstruction, articulate one of these three factors. Don't send it. Thanks, Dan. All right, Rick, get ready for it. All in one, all in one, all in one chat, Rick. All in one chat, Rick. No, negative. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not right because it's not in one chat. There's three. There's not just one. So what do you? Oh, oh, oh! I see. I see. I see. All right. Well, Amanda can't win because she's been banned for life. So I mean, she's cleaning us out over here, Rick. I mean, we have a whole damn shelf over here, like made for uh, stuff that we have to send to Amanda. So she's out of here. Um, I safety, physical interference, or illegal conduct? No. <laughs> All right. I mean, I guess I'm going to give up on uh, you know. But the the closest one after Amanda, Amanda, can you are you are you willing to give your prize to somebody else? Good. Greedy ass man, cleaning us out over here. I mean, I'm going to have to give you my give you my car soon. <laughs> All right. So uh, Donald has the next best answer. All right. So Donald. <laughs> I know she I, I mean, she's cleaning us out. I mean, she's she obviously takes notes. All right. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Donald email Richard at blue to gold dot com. And uh, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, it's actually true. Maybe I'm like slipping her the questions, you know? All right, here's the next one. Come on. Get serious over here. This is a serious competition. Focus on blank, not content. Don't send it. Okay, Rick, this is going to be fast. It's going to come at you fast, Rick. It's going to come at you fast, Rick. Get ready for it. Come on, Eagle Eye, Rick. Okay. Who got it, Rick? You set yourself up for that one. Rick, did you put the answer in there or what? Or who, who got it? Okay. John W. Um, email Richard at blue to gold.com and send. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Our, our last one. <laughs> our last one is. First when auditors want three things, what are they? Okay, Rick, who who got it? <laughs> Amanda. Who who's after Amanda then? Okay. Sean McMillan. Send the email to Richard at blue to gold .com. And you can win one of our fabulous prizes. All right. That's all I got for you. I do have to. Nice job, Sean. I got to cut out. Amanda, thank you for being here. As always, you are definitely uh, one of my star students. I remember when Sean, he was one of my star students at one time. Now I think he's actually like he's actually losing knowledge as he attends these these classes. All right. <laughs> all right. You're welcome, guys. I appreciate you. Uh, our next webinar will be Wednesday at 8 p.m. And we are going to do a show on that one, I think, so afterwards. All right, guys, I got to go. So I appreciate you. Thank you so uh, so much. If you have any follow-up questions, um, just put them in the chat. Well, hey, Brad, Brad, look, I got I got a couple minutes right now. Brad, do you want to go on... Um, you want to go on the mic or do you want, can I turn your mic on? Do you want to just ask on chat? I don't want to leave you guys. I don't, I'd rather just answer right now. All right, Brad, you should see a, a thing pop up asking you to unmute yourself. There you go. What's up, Brad? You're welcome, Sammy. Hey, um, Brad, you want to try to call in? Is that like a next best thing? 
Let's do that, Brad. Come on. All right, there you go, Brad. Give me a call. <laughs> For a good, give me a call, Brad. No, no, not during the show, Brad. Afterwards. Hold on. Hey, buddy. Yeah, there you go. So we have. I can still hear you. Here, put, put down your turn down your volume. All right, turn back. Come on, this is a monkey operation around here. See? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the issue that we have is in our in our city, we have a lake. It's got a beach. We have a lot of kids, a lot of people that come out there, hang out at the beach, and then you have kids that go out there and cause all kinds of chaos, a lot of issues. But there'll be fights. There'll be. Um, They'll get into screaming at each other, using obscenities. And so we have forever, officers have kicked them out based off of disorderly, based off of obscene language. And then they'll kick them out and trespass them from the parks, from the city parks. So the follow-up to that has been, if they continue to be a problem, if they come back, officers have resorted to trespass arrest based off of that. Mm -hmm. If I'm understanding you correctly, that's probably bad practice. Would that be correct? No, no. And I'm glad you called. I, I, I need, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm realizing the flaw in my, in my webinar now, because what I, one thing I have failed to do is to define the first amendment speech. What, what are, you know, what speech are we protecting here? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. We're not, we're not protecting some, you know, thug kids, you know, trying to uh, intimidate other kids. You know what I'm saying? That's not freedom of speech, right? You understand? Freedom of speech yeah. is protesting your government. It's uh, it's speaking your mind about the DMV. It's things like that. So I guess my problem is that I, I've not done it, and I can see the flaw again. I, I've not done a good job of like, it's not that they're, you, you, people can just use profanity and people can, um, you know, People can uh, say whatever they want. They can always drop the f bomb, and you know, at, at the TSA and all those other things. It's that are they engaged in really po like political speech? Is probably the main thing, right? Are they yeah. engaged in political speech? Are they engaged in religious speech or commercial speech? Is protected to some degree, right? But mainly, the thing we're looking for, my friend, is religious and political speech. Those two things are by far the most protected. Now, what you're talking about is not political or religious speech. This is just speech. And it's causing a disturbance. It's causing, it's reducing the, you know, it's not, the, the, you know, first of all, these, they might not be using the facilities as they're, as they're supposed to, which is for beach and yeah. for leisure and so forth. So I think you're fine. If they're causing a disturbance with their speech and the way that they're acting and you can articulate it, I think it's it's good. Okay. All right. That makes And, and that makes sense what you're saying with, being concentrated more on the political and religious side of that, as opposed to just causing mayhem That's, and chaos. It really is. And like, and I would say, like, imagine you got this guy who is, you know, like, um, you know, like yelling profanities in the park, and he's, let's say, he's like, he's, um, he's mental, okay, and he's just saying like a lot of like weird things, and he's cursing. You may be able to take enforcement action on him because he may be disturbing the peace of other people. But make that same person who, and the, first of all, the, the yelling and so forth could be could be restricted, right? Time, place, manner. Mm -hmm. But yeah. take that same per person. He's saying, hey, our current administration is doing this and that and, and blah, 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 and whatever it is, right? That is different. And let's say he's throwing in those same curse words. Different. Sure. Different. It's like BLM and, you know, Antifa, you know, if they're throwing out, you know, curse words, that's protected because they they're likely engaged in political speech. Okay. Make, yep. That makes total sense. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, my Thanks, friend. Sir. I'm glad you called. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you called. I'm going to, I'm going to update my slides to reflect that better in the future. So I appreciate okay. that. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, my friend. Bye. Yeah. That's a really good question. That's a very good question. And so um, I'm going to fix that for the next uh, webinar. And uh, I'm actually, I'm glad too, because the people watching us, I, I did not stop the recording which I probably should have because of uh, the, the the trivia, which we're going to change anyway. But for those who are watching online, man, Brad's question really is important. So I'll fix it for the future. Anything else? Okay, I think we're good here. And uh, all right, cool. That's a good. That's a good note. To awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. We'll we'll talk next. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.